Okay. We are doing 2.8 today. This is the last section of this unit, okay? There's a lot of things that we've already talked about that we're kind of combining into this section, okay? So we're starting, the first question says, determine where this polynomial is positive zero and negative. Okay, pause. Let's just sketch just a general polynomial graph. What does a polynomial look like? Kind of wavy, right? Just up and down, wavy back and forth. So I'm just drawing just a very basic one. Where on this very basic graph is my graph positive? Where is it negative? And where is it zero? Zero, zero not just the origin. The whole, the points it crosses on the x-axis. Good. So zero is where we cross the x-axis. Actually, let me make that. Good. Positive is above x. So everything up here is positive. Specifically, these sections right there and this section right here. And then negative is everything below. Specifically, this part and this part. Okay. So our job, if I give you an inequality sign, or if I say, tell me where the function or the graph is positive, negative, zero, you need to sketch a graph and you need to see where is it above the x-axis, where is it below, we have to answer that question, okay? So in all of these, we're going to do some sketching. With this polynomial one, it's already in a factored form. Can you tell me what my zeros are here? Negative three and negative one. I like negative three, I like four, I don't like negative one. <laughs> if I were to set that factor equal to zero, it would be x squared equals negative one. And what happens when I square root negative one? I, can I graph I anywhere on my graph? No. So we actually can pretend that that one just doesn't exist. It doesn't affect my zeros. Okay. However, I do need to use it to now tell me end behavior. So zero matters, and then how my graph goes. Is it positive even? Is it negative even? Is it, that's, I think, negative odd to you guys, positive odd. Is this positive or negative? Positive. positive. Is it even or odd? Even. Good. Why is it even? <laughs> Good. One, two, three, four. Because there's no negative out front. Show me with your arms what does positive even look like? Touchdown Jesus, right? So let's graph it. I'm going to graph a sketch of a graph. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I've got zeros at four and at negative three. And positive even just means that I cross. I started high. I cross. I cross. That's it. Now, maybe there's some other funky things going on here, but we just wanted to do a sketch. I have my zeros, I have my end behavior, that's all that matters. And so now my question is, where is my function equal to zero? When is my function greater than zero, where it's positive? And when is my function less than zero? Oh, shoot, you know one thing I need to add? Can I add something that was not typed in here? That's why I missed it. I need, thank you so much. <laughs> I need the x minus four to be squared. How does that affect my sketch and how does that affect everything else? It's a bounce. So bounce where at four. Is it still positive? I mean, it's still positive, but it's not still even. It's now odd. I'm so sorry for that. I fixed it faster in my other class, but I forgot with you guys. So now positive odd, what does positive odd look like? Well, for us. No, for you, it looks like this. Wait, what? Starts low, it ends high. Starts low, ends high. Shoot, just come in. Okay. Starts low, cross, bounce, ends high. <laughs> Why is it squared again? Because I should have had it squared on the paper. Oh, okay. Yeah, you did not need to know that. I should have told you that earlier. And so I was like, how was I supposed to know that? You weren't. I had to give that to you. 
All right, now, sorry, this is helpful because now I have a few important things. Okay, where is my graph equal to zero? Where am I on the x-axis? Four and negative three. Good, four and negative three. So my answer here is gonna be four comma negative three. And since it's not an interval, it's just only those two numbers, let's use our fancy braces there. Now I wanna do greater than zero. Where is my graph greater than zero? Where am I above the x-axis? Starting where? Negative three to negative four. Negative three to four. We're not gonna include it and then four to infinity. Very good. Negative three to four and then four to infinity. And then where is it less than zero? Negative infinity to negative three. That's it. That's everything. Yeah, Kate. How come it's negative So it's always the smallest number first, and negative infinity is smaller than negative three. Mm -hmm. So even though in our heads, we're like, oh, we started here and then we went that way. I like to read from left to right. So technically we're starting here where it's really negative and then I come up and then I stop at negative three. Mm -hmm. All right, that's most of today. Is everybody doing okay with that? Let's keep going. What about the next one? This one is also factored and this time it only wants where we are less than or equal to zero. So I don't need to list all of the intervals. I just need to list that one. What are my zeros here? Positive six. Anything special happening at any of my zeros? Bounce at six. Is this graph positive or negative? Is it even or odd? Even. You just showed me a minute ago what positive even looks like. Very good. And, uh, touchdown. Touchdown, Jesus. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Graph it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thanks. Negative seven, negative four, positive six. And I'm bouncing at six, okay. Cross, cross, bounce. Okay. And this time I don't need all the intervals. I only want less than or equal to zero, which where is that again, above or below? Below. Good. So my function is less than or equal to zero from negative seven to negative four. Am I gonna bracket or parentheses that? bracket. Now, since it says equal to zero, is there anywhere else that it's equal to zero? Ooh, one more place. Where else? Six. six. So I need to say six. And since six, six is a single number, you got to put little braces around it. For some reason, my right brace always looks so silly. My left brace is good, though. I don't have, I have to just do whatever sign they told me. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Same idea for the next one. You ready to keep going? Is the next one ready to graph right away or do I need to do a little work? Do a little work. But can we factor this one? Yeah, we can group it. Let's group it. Get your x's. Tell me if it's positive, negative, even, or odd.
check in with me. All right, now I'm gonna go graph anything crazy at any of my zeros or does it just cross at all of them? Just crosses. Now we have to look at the problem. What does the problem tell us the interval that we care about? Greater than zero. Where where do I have an interval that's greater than zero? Negative one to one. Good, negative one to one. Bracket or parentheses? Bracket. Mm, it doesn't say or equal to. And then you four of this. Good, four to infinity. All right, again, I feel like we've done these kind of things before. This doesn't feel totally new. Do you guys feel like you're keeping up with this? Okay, the next one is gonna feel a little bit harder, but again, I don't think it's new. It's not factored and it's not groupable. What do I have to do if I can't group it? I wish I could, but I've got a cube. Oh, but first we need to list what? PRRs. And then we gotta plug it in and then we gotta do synthetic division. One, two, three. I know there's a lot going on there. You guys remember your PRRs? Sadly, did I hear someone say sadly? <laughs> Oh, I got a lot of numbers to list. Oh. I've got to divide all of them by one, which is just all the numbers, and I have to divide all of them by two. Now, the only reasons it matters is with <laughs> one, because one is not easily divisible by two, and same thing with three. But I don't have to list two over two, because two over two is just one. I don't have to do four over two, because four over two is two. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you that we then would have to plug in and we have to find it. Um, it's going to take us a minute, so I'll just tell you which one it is. We are going to plug in negative two to start. That's the first um, PR that works. So your job is to make sure that you can get negative two to work. And then once you get negative two, when you plug it in, it equals zero. Then what do you need to do? Synthetic. synthetic. Then it's synthetic division. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Wait, we know what you talked about. I know it will equal zero. But you want us to still do it. I want you to show me that it equals zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm really not referring to it. All right, that equals zero, so we're good. Do your synthetic division. Okay, everybody hanging with me so far? Okay, what do I do once I get my answer from my synthetic division? Oh, whoa. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, it's zoom it again. Or, or factor, or factor. I think this one factors. Oh, six and five. Three and four. Three and four is gonna work. 
And I want the four and the three, they'll both be negative. Okay, from my factor, I got three halves, I got four. There's one other zero that we found earlier that I need to list here. What's the other zero? They have two because that's what I got when I plugged in for my PRR. So don't forget about x equals negative two. I need all three of those zeros in order to be successful. This is, so far we just had to do a new process, but everything else has been the same. We found our zeros. Now what's the next thing I want you to find before we can sketch? Okay, and that's back. Okay. Oh, that's probably wrong. Well. That's why it was so hard to do it. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> looks like why even the target. <laughs> All right, so now is this positive or negative function? Oh, we have to graph it. We're not done yet. <laughs> oh, negative. Positive. Positive. Is it even or odd? Even. Odd. 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 Let's graph it. Do we have anything funny happening or is it just crossing every time? Just normal. Well, it's, it's How do you know what? Go back to the very beginning, the equation, the very, the very beginning. The first term is two x to the third. Two is a positive number. X to the third is an odd exponent. Odd exponent. You only count when it's factored out. Can I see the graph? Now, the graph's not the end. We have to do our function um, notation. You could have figured out positive odd before doing any of that work. Nothing that we did affected positive odds. It's the very first term. Right? Yeah. Oh, then, it's, and then you look and see if it's a positive or negative. And if it's just x to the third, it's positive. <laughs> All right, it says we want greater than zero. What intervals am I greater than zero here? Good, and then when? Good. Okay, there was a lot going on there, but we needed all of it to solve. All right, when you're done, flip your paper over. That wasn't too bad. Okay. I think I have a couple with your calculator. Do you think you can do five and six in the calculator? Oh, no. All right, go ahead. On number five, can you move everything to one side and then graph it? All right, I'll do it silently up here, but it sounds like from all the talking, you know what you're doing. So I'll let you do it by yourself then. I have to plug that in for Y1. <laughs> are we doing these problems or are we not? Um, um, you can just graph what it looks like, but you're going to need the specific points for interval notation. So you're going to need to go find those interval notations. So like in, on my graph, I'm just drawing like a loose sketch and something like that. And then I'll go find out all of those points and label them on my picture. So I'll label that point. I'll label that point. I'll label that point.
How do I find those points? Uh, second trace. If I have my thing, I would, oh, yeah, intersection. Or zero, zeros. Left bound, right bound, make sure you're just getting one zero at a time. So my first one is point three. My second one is one point five. Then my third one is four point two. What interval do I care about here? What does the problem tell me I want? Less than or equal to zero? So I'm gonna write f of x less than or equal to zero and it's those couple intervals. Um, yeah, it's right here. And it's right there. Negative infinity. Good. Negative infinity to point three. Am I going to do bracket or parentheses for that? Sorry. Bracket. And then what to what? 1.5 to 4.2. Brackets on all of that as well. Yes, Nikki. All right, the next one. It looks like it's two separate problems, but it's the same problem. Just one of them says greater than zero, and one of them says less than or equal to zero. Do you think you can plug that next one in and find out what those two intervals are? Ready, set, go. I'm just super excited today. <laughs> I never know what he's talking about. He's really like jumping. He, he is jumping. Sometimes he jumps, jumps and like yeah. slams down. <laughs> I think it was a master. <laughs> <laughs> We're falling apart. We're just gonna. His row two just falling apart right Yeah, now. we're not good. Over it's mine. You guys get the same graph I'm getting. What will that make my interval that's my function greater than zero? What will that make that interval? All reals. All reals. Bam. What will my interval then of everything less than or equal to zero be? No solution. No solution. You can write no solution. You can just do an empty set, whatever makes you happy. See the there's nothing negative. It's literally not any word. You see how I shaded underneath the x axis? There's nothing underneath the x axis. There's no graph below the x axis. And so if you threw a ball up in the air and it got stuck there, it's not. There's just nothing below the x axis. That's like slow. That's how that makes it easy. All right, I got three more problems oh, to do with you. We're doing great on time. You guys are killing it. We might get some homework time, so let's keep it up. Okay, we did a bunch of polynomials just now. We're about to do some rational functions. Can you remind me when we did those polynomials? I'm just going to make a little note off to the side. When we were doing our polynomials, what did I care about when we were deciding whether it was greater than or less than zero? What did we have to find first? The X's. the X's, which are my zeros. I care most about my zeros or my X-intercepts. You can call it whatever you want. 
I also care about, I made you tell me if it was positive or negative and even or odd, right? So that is my end behavior. Okay, polynomials, you had to do zeros and your end behavior. This next couple, these are fraction ones. These are rational functions. <laughs> On these, I also care about my x-intercepts but I also care about my vertical asymptotes. Every teacher teaches this a little bit differently. I'm going to teach it with a sketch of this graph. If that's something that we maybe don't like, I can maybe show you something different on Monday. But for right now, we're going to sketch the graph just like we did those polynomials. Just like notice how all these polynomials, we have sketch, we have sketch, we have sketch. That's what we're going to do, but we're going to do our rational function, which are those like little C curves, right? Okay. We'll find other pieces, but the only time where things change is at the x-intercept and the vertical asymptote, so we'll kind of explore that. So let's look at this first one right here. In order to solve this, though, we need to get zero on the right-hand side. So let's move this four over here so I can get zero on the other side. In order for me to graph this, though, I need that to all be on the left side to just be one function, one fraction. How can I combine that all together to just one thing? Good. Let's make a fraction and let's get like denominators. So what am I going to multiply on top and bottom? X minus three. So I have x plus 1 minus 4 plus 4x four plus 12 over x minus 3. So one more step. You may be cleaned up already, but I haven't cleaned up. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I get negative 3x plus 13 over x minus 3. That's a rational function. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. From here, could you find your vertical asymptote? Yeah, what are you going to do? Set the denominator equal to zero. So for this, I'm going to do my VA is going to be X minus three equals zero or X equals three. That's important. How do I find my X intercept? Zero. Zero is set the numerator equal to zero. So negative three X plus 13 equals zero. So negative three equals negative 13 divided by negative three, 13 over three. Now, we are gonna find a couple other things just so we can really center ourselves on this graph, but these are the only numbers that matter. When we look at the graph, you'll see that is when we go from positive to negative, is when we have an asymptote and when we have an x-intercept, okay? So the one other thing I think on this graph that might be helpful is my horizontal asymptote. What would my horizontal asymptote of this equation be? Negative three. Negative three. We also could do the y-intercept. I don't think it's super helpful here because I think we'll have enough information either way. But just to practice, what would my y-intercept here be? Good, or negative 13 thirds. So we are going to use those two numbers to help us graph, but they're not going to be numbers that are part of my answer. Yeah, Pam. Hello, horizontal asymptote, where'd you get negative? Because my... Um, Exponents are the same. It's an X and an X. I just look at their leading coefficient. So negative three over one. Good question. Okay, let's catch a graph of this. So my vertical asymptote is going to be at three. My horizontal asymptote is at negative three. My x-intercept is at 13 thirds. What is that approximately? 
4.3 or something. So my x-intercept is going to be at a little bit over 4. Wait, is it negative? Oh, the kid well, the x became positive, and then the y is negative, so my y will be down here at approximately negative 4.3 or whatever. All right, that's enough information. I know where my c-curves could go because I've got my x-intercept and I've got my y-intercept, so I just got to hug my asymptotes. Now... My equation says f of x must be less than zero. Remember that it's greater than zero up here. It's less than zero down here. Good. So negative infinity, when does it switch back up above to be positive? Not quite at 13 thirds. I see it positive up here. Where did that start at? Oh, three. Three. Why is it at starting at three? The asymptote. So at the asymptote, we like hugged the asymptote for a long time, but then eventually we had to come back up positively and start going back negative again. And then I was positive until what point where I went back down to the negative side? 13, 13 thirds. So then we'll say 13 thirds. Positive I'm going to tell you that a couple of these rational graphs are really weird, but I promise on a test it will be normal, okay? So I think the next one we're about to do is going to be a little bit funky, but we can work through it. And then the one there's one on the homework that I know is a little bit funky, which is why I'm trying to maybe get you guys to homework so we can look at that before you leave. Okay, everybody good so far? All right, let's try the next one. Okay, we got to get like terms here. How do we combine those two different fractions into one fraction? Good, we'll multiply by x minus one on the first one on top and bottom, and then x plus three on top and bottom of the second one. You don't want to cancel it out because that's going to give me a vertical asymptote and I got to deal with those. Maggie asked a really good question. Why don't we just cancel it out? Because last uh, last night, I literally was like, start canceling things out. We're not actually solving for X. We want to sketch a graph and that vertical asymptote is where changes are going to happen. So we don't want to just cancel it out. Um, all right, so the numerator is going to be 8x plus 4, and then the denominator is going to be x minus 1, x plus 3. Let's go ahead and find our VA, our x-intercept, and then I also want to find HA and y-intercept just so we can kind of like um, get ourselves all in order on this graph. Once you find all your stuff, let's throw it on a graph. Once I put all those pieces on, 
Do you see something kind of weird? There's gonna be like three pieces, yeah. It touches the X intercept is the X intercept is on the asymptote. I'm gonna be very honest. This is not like something I really wanted to talk about. I do think this is more of like an honors or AP standard than what I really want to deal with in academic. The I feel like I mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. The horizontal asymptote is not as like solidly don't cross as the X asymptote as the vertical asymptote is. So technically we are allowed to cross this. Let's graph to see what this looks like because it doesn't look like anything that I've done before with you. Now, I don't want us to all pause and calm down though because when I give you a test or a quiz, it should be something that you should be able to graph easily, okay? So this is gonna look weird. Don't panic and don't be like, how was I supposed to know? I promise when I do it for you on a quiz or test, it will be a very generic, like just two asymptotes up in one column, up in the other. It should be very easy to graph. This is just a funny one, so we're gonna deal with it. It's a nice little learning experiment and I'm gonna put this in the calculator to show what it should look like. So I've got eight X plus four and then I am the product of old calculators, so I like to give as many parentheses as possible. So I have a very clear numerator, divided, denominator, and then both my factors are in there. I'm going to make sure I'm on just a standard window, and it looks something like this, okay? Which everything that I've drawn is true. It's just I know that like I would have a hard time knowing where everything went, because normally I tell you they go like catty corner, like checkerboard. In this case, this graph kind of makes like a cubic motion and then I have like the bottom left has a little C curve and then the top right has a little C curve. I don't expect you to see that in your own head and do that on your own. But now that we have the graph, I do believe that we can find the interval pretty easily, the less than zero interval. So we have our function, we want less than zero. It still is what I said before. I still have not lied to you. Everything, whenever we have a change, it's either the vertical asymptote or it's a um, X intersect. So if you notice, those are the two places where we are below where the function is less than or equal to zero. What's that first interval? What would I name it? To negative three. And then what would my other interval be? Negative one to I think it will be or negative one half. Negative one half to one. And if you notice, those are still all the numbers that were either my <laughs> vertical asymptotes or my x intercepts. Those are the ones that matter there. Okay. You guys are killing it. We got one more problem. Any questions yet? <laughs> The last problem, I actually think you know how to do. This is one of those box problems. Do you remember we're doing those box problems in like some of the last units yeah. where you cut out the corners? I'm going to tell you right now, there's a box problem on your final. I promise you, 100%, there's going to be a box problem on your final. It is really easy if you remember how to do it and you spend time studying and you focus on it. If you haven't looked at this once, it's very particular and you guys are gonna remind us because we're about to do it. There are some very particular things that are easy if you remember it and if you don't, that makes it feel really hard, okay? So let me read the problem. It says, Dixie Packaging Company has contracted another firm to design boxes with a volume of at least 600 inches cubed. Squares are to be cut from the corners of a 20 inch by 25 inch piece of cardboard and with the flaps folded up to make an open box. What size square should be cut from the cardboard in order for the volume to be at least 600 inches squared? Cute. What should I draw a picture of to model this? A rectangle. What else? Four corners. X is on each of those corners. What should I label each side of the box? 20 by 25. We are going to do deal with the X in a second. The whole side was 20. Now, how much is this side? 20 minus 2X. 20 minus 2X. What's the other side going to be? Good. I'm using that to help me find my volume, but I need one more thing. That's my, we're going to put that in a second. One more thing before I do that. X. X, because it's my height. 
Volume is length times width times height. 20 minus 2x is length. 25 minus 2x is width. Height is x. And that is going to be equal to that 600. I've got a y1. I've got a y2. Let's graph it. And then I'm going to ask you where does it, um, where, what interval we'll want. Okay. So think about as you graph it, what interval you'll want. Think also about your window. I might be quiet for a minute. I want you to play around with your window. For what? Okay. Anything else I should change? For guests? No. Oh, wait. Okay, try it. Oh, shoot. Wait, was that good? Uh, Almost. Okay. So, A is B. No, like a thousand. Okay. <laughs> and then negative ten. Hey, you gotta get ne or negative. No, why? Why men? Why men do like negative a hundred? No, no. Yes. Like negative three. Negative That's it. Do I care about that little loop at the bottom? Yes, because it no. Oh yeah. Don't. <laughs> do I care about the, the right like? Line. I care about the red line. Do I care? I have like a little hump and then it comes down. Do I care about it coming back up? Don't we normally on the box problem only see like the first hump, the first like mountain? Why should I go back to my window and just make it go to 10 instead of, and actually probably zero to 10 instead of negative 10 to 20? Um, yes, but why? That's the, That's the first hump that I want to see. How long did I say that the like the width of the box was? 20. And I need to cut an equal amount off each side. What's the most I can cut off of one side and also cut off the other side? 10. Why? Because it's half. I can only cut off half of the smallest side. Oh, we talked. We talked about this, right? Remember, we talked about our domain. The most, the smallest you could cut off is zero, and the most you could cut off is your smallest side divided by two. So my domain or my x min and x max, my window is going to go zero to ten. There is other graph, but that's not realistic to what we're dealing with. I have an actual piece of paper. I can only cut off at most ten on both sides. Okay, so my graph looks like this. It's like kind of that first time. Ooh, let's make that a little bit better. Goes up to 600. It says that I want my volume to be at least 600. Do I want numbers above 600 or I don't want numbers below 600? Above. Above. I always like to think of it like a test for some reason in my head. That makes a little bit more sense. If I say I want at least an 80 on this test, an 80 is okay, and anything more than 80 is fine, but anything lower than an 80 is not okay. So I want everything above that. How do I find these points? Intersection. Intersection. Second trace, intersect. Oh no, I haven't had a commercial in forever. Oh, if you're working ahead of me, work ahead of me. I'll find it when my commercial's over. You mean we? We will find it when our commercial ends. When our commercial is over. Yeah, we used to get all those ADC masses. Now Dropbox is a. I'm not sure why they're advertising, but. I have Dropbox. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I use it for my digital. And then, because I don't think it's sending everyone the pictures. Good. So 1.7. And then my other one is at 6.82. Am I brackets, parentheses? What am I doing here? Bracket. Bracket. Why, Maggie? 
It's at least. We're okay if it's exactly 600 or we want more. Right. That was a lot. I know that was a lot to say. Great job. I want you to pull out your homework really quick because we still have six minutes. And I want to show you something because the graph on number letter B, I think, of your homework is really weird. You could solve this. I did all my work out. And you could do all this work out too, but this is the picture the graph will make, okay? So I just want to show you that. Let me just, let me make this a little bit more clear. So this graph is very weird. Again, this is something that I would tell you I would not put on a test, but I was looking at it and I think it's good to have a good graph. So you see where it, it's above the X axis and then it crosses and it stays under and then it comes back up. And then when I do my vertical asymptote, it still stays over there. So this is what the graph looks like. I put it in my calculator for the last class. You can do all of this on your own, but I would either copy down this picture or take a picture of that graph because I think that Knowing the graph, you can give me the interval, but I don't know if I would have been able to come up with the graph on my own. I'm doing four problems. Two A on your homework. Oh, I just wrote it in B. That's okay. I'm so sorry. That's my fault. Why did I do that? Let me just zoom out for one second. And I haven't looked at C. I'm hoping C is fine, but two A looks like this. Okay. <laughs> So try and do the workout like I did over here, but this is what the graph is going to end up looking like, okay? I'm sorry, it's weird. Tell me that straight up next. Okay. So I'm gonna stop the recording. Um, 2.8 is due next.